Hello everybody, Darren here, and welcome back to episode 22 in my Anno 1800 Let's Play. Now in the last episode, we largely finished work on our production island, which is now running quite smoothly. It's supplying our home island here with eight different products. But today, we're going to have a bit of a change of scenery as we work to increase our population and our optimization of Crown Falls. But before we hop on over to Cape Trelawney, we've got a little bit of tying up loose ends to do in the old world. Namely, a quest from Arthur Gasparov called Petite Compulsions Artistiques. Gasparov has asked you to collect something he ordered from Madame Gehina, worried that if he goes himself, he'll simply get lost in there, marveling at all the joyful objects are. And we're gonna get a Topiary Avenue from this, which would be quite nice. But well, he's only got 10 minutes left of the quest, so I'm in a bit of a hurry. I've sent our flagship just over to Madame Gehina's already, just to go pick up whatever it is. So we've got his... Oh. Did not expect that. Our flagship might not be able to handle this combat on its own. Luckily, we have a Pyrophorian warship here. <laughs> uh, that is actually a complete coincidence. I was sending that to do the other quest. We're after taking damage now, so we have to get to Arthur's, I think. Alright, easy enough. So, this ship has to go on to his clipper, which is up here, and then we have our Pyrphorian warship, which is a beast, and what speed is this? 10? 10. 10.6 movement speed, consistent, good damage per second, let's see what Madame Gehina has for us. Good, my agents didn't even catch a whiff of you. Now, it's time for the real challenge, I'm meeting someone today, follow them back and make sure you stay every bit as invisible as you've been up till now. The ship disappeared. Hmm. Once begin the tale. Oh, maybe this is like that other one that I failed before. I'm ready. Yes, it is. Got to stay within the radius. I don't know if we're going to be fast enough, but at least this is a steamship. I might have to manually micro this. It says follow ship. So let's just click that. People said that if you click that, it should generally try to stay within this radius, so hopefully it works. Uh, yeah, and people were actually mentioning, it's like, oh, this is just like a campaign mission. See, I don't know why my ship just stopped there. See? I didn't do anything there. People were saying it's just like a campaign mission, but I haven't actually played the campaign. Um, nothing against it. I actually just have not tried it. I'm going to fail this quest now because the ship decided to stop. Yep, failed it again. Well, I, I don't know. I'm at a loss for words. I clicked follow. The ship decided to stop randomly, so there's nothing I could do about it, really. I could micro it the whole way, but oh well. Uh, but yeah, I haven't played the campaign, because when this game first kind of... Uh, what's the word? Not came out, but I was aware of this game. I was playing the beta. And the beta was just the sandbox that you could play all the way up to Artisans. And then when the game fully came out, I was just like, oh, I just want to play more of that. So I just never tried the campaign. Um, I've heard it's quite good, but I've just never tried it. Uh, so, I have a list of things to do as our ship heads on over to his clipper before we move out of here and go to Cape Trelawney. Uh, and that is to set up a charter route. One of the things that I forgot to do is that this island, while getting its sausages and its bread, is actually supplying Rush. Now, Lusk, which is further down this way, as you may remember, is now doing all of the pig farms and supplying sausages. So there's a three island dependency here that I wasn't really uh, accounting for so what we need to do is set up a charter route it could just do a regular route but people have been asking to use a charter route so I thought this would be a good example of one and uh, we can set them up for free uh, for the first two or three I think so what we essentially need is just to pick up some bread um, from swords and drop it off at rush and it's zero influence so I'll just click charter and then a, a ship from the AI will come in off map and just do this and they'll ship across 80 bread, I guess. Don't know if you can select multiple goods. I'm guessing you can't. No. Yep, so that's all set up and good to go, I think. So let's see what we got from Arthur. Oh yeah, we got our topiary, topiary avenue. Nice. Um, and then the other thing I want to do with Arthur is I think he's pretty close to being non-aggression. So let's just see. Can we flatter him? Near certain? 70? All right, so let's go non-aggression pact. 70,000, I'll take it. And then trade rights, 26,000. 
There we go. So, let's see what he's actually got on offer. Um, because, like I said in the last episode, I didn't show it, but it was during the time lapse. I bought pocket watches. There we go. That's what I'm looking for. Lots of pocket watches. These pocket watches only cost 3,300. Uh, over here, they cost 8,000. So, we're getting them way cheaper. So, let's buy up as much as we can. In fact, let's send our steamer up here to grab pretty much as many of those as we can. And then we'll go down towards Enbesa and we'll make like two or three million. And then that'll probably be the last time I do that because we've got a lot of money and what I'll end up using that money for is buying items and stuff to optimize uh, Crown Falls. So, some things that I wanted to address and do is turn off overtime, largely just turn it off everywhere. Because we don't need it anymore. So that's it. We've got no production for the artisans and no production for the engineers. It's perfect. Uh, it's all been done on other islands. Now, if memory serves me correctly, consumer goods is going to be a little low for the fish. So we'll just pop down another one of those. And that should largely solve that issue. Yep, let's fix that one. Obviously, you're just comparing the green bar versus the blue bar. You want more green than blue. Uh, the next thing to do is build another bakery. And that should balance that out. So if we have a look at... Let's see, our bakery, and we toggle on rush. Now we're oversupplying, which is nice, uh, but more importantly, I think if we look at intermediate products, we can see that flour is now evened out, so that's good. So they should be working just fine. They're actually full right now, but when the charter charters come along and move them, then they won't be. Just thinking about it, actually, these could all be moved and just buffed quite a lot uh, if I just put them next to here. So I might just do that instead. Let's just do that now. So three, and then we can delete that one and that one. There we go. It's a bit of a waste of money, obviously, putting it down right now, but I wasn't to know. Uh, this can go as well. Good. Yeah, so these should all be powered now. That's way more bread than what we're going to need. In fact, it's we're over-consuming. The thing is, we've got a bakery in the middle of the town. So that counts as one of our things. I could just turn it off and leave it there for aesthetic purposes, and then it's actually the chain is evened out yet again. Alrighty, um, next thing to do, build a public mooring out here. As you can see, we're in a heavy deficit, and this place has actually got decent attractiveness, so now that we've removed all of that industry, right? So we've gotten rid of all the vulgarity, all the pig farms and all of that. We've even gotten rid of the charcoal kilns, everything. Now there's just a little bit of oil. It's not too bad. We're obviously way higher now in culture and nature. So let's put down a public mooring and see what we can get for it. Might take a while before we actually see the result of it. I'm just going to pop it here lazily because I'll have to redo the docks at the front of the town later. So it's pretty lazy to do that, but it'll take me too long because essentially what we need to do is move some of these piers, change around where the warehouses go, and then find space for the public mooring uh, and maybe do something out the back. We're actually running really low on coastline because the amount of fisheries we have. It'd be good to get a harbor master office at some point in the future. Speaking of trade unions and harbor master things, I did build this here, a town hall, but I'm actually going to get rid of it. There's no item here. I just did it to get a quest done. So I'm just going to get rid of that for now. Get that influence back, because we kind of need it. So, let's see what else we need to do. Uh, oh, yeah. So, yeah, that's going to take a while to kind of happen. We've got room for museums and things. We've actually got another quest here. Let's just see what this is from the engineers. When they are green and when they are brown, they're bendy mean will cause me to frown, but split in between for a very short while, they're joyfully yellow and cause me to smile. What am I? Hmm. When they are green and when they are brown, their body will mean will cause me to frown, but split in between for a very short time, they're joyfully yellow and cause me to smile. Well, what it normally would be is something, a consumer good that, that you can make here. But I can't think of anything that would be green, brown, or yellow beer? Probably not beer. But I'll just click it anyway. Oh, I know what it is. It's a banana. It's a banana. Does it work for clicking in the new world? I didn't know that, if that's the case. Let's see. Hey, it worked. And we got penicillin. Affects all buildings when activated. Chance of illness is lowered. Hey, I can appreciate that. Seeing as we're always getting sick. 
Well, we turned off the work conditions now. That's the other theory that people have about sickness, although it doesn't do anything. Okay, you may be right. It has lowered it down a bit. <laughs> that could be accurate. Uh, do we have a free town hall, perhaps? Yeah, we could activate some penicillin out here for, the, for everyone. Does it do anything else? No, it doesn't do anything else. We'll just activate it anyway. Boom. There we go. The vaccine is out there, kind of. All right, nice. Um, now, what last things do we have to do? We need to send vast amounts of construction material to the Cape Trelawney, and they're going to need lots of windows and things, because we're going to be getting artisans. So let's just grab pretty much everything we can there. Steel and windows. Just anything we can't make here, we're going to ship somewhere else. So, actually, I guess before we hop off, we should really fill this ship up. And then when all of this is going on, we can start to build up Crown Falls. And then by the time we're kind of done placing out our blueprints and stuff, these ships should arrive ready for everything to be built. That's the, uh, that's the idea. Um, but yeah, we could have a quick look over at Lusk as well while we're waiting. Uh, let's see if there's any issues here. We are out of goulash. We're out of goulash. How can that be? Red peppers. So red peppers are a bit low. Let me just check on this really quickly as well. The Angus. Should be delivering 100 to and from Rush all the time. So let's see what red peppers are like here. It's an agricultural product. Red peppers are gaining. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. That should be plenty. We could just build another one. Could activate Bright Harvest here as well. There's just always so much to do. But I kind of want to get out of here. So let's just grab two of these. And just be super lazy. Are they built? They don't look built. But apparently they are. Uh, okay. That looks strange. Weird. It's like it's been blueprinted, but it's not. Maybe if it, there we go. That was weird. All right. Anyway, that should help just speed that all up. And that's our little um charter route. There it is. Fifty dollar upkeep. It's got its bread, and it's just going to be taking that to and from this other place. Anyways, let's load up with whatever construction material we can. Okay, and let's go. Cape Trelawney. Crown Falls. Excellent. Alrighty. Um, I think that's pretty much everything I had on the list to do here. Was to turn off the overtime, build a bakery, all of that stuff. So that's all done now. So this town should be totally fine. We've got one more quest to do. Let's just have a look at it. In the pastry section, a genius. In a new city, a fruitcake. Can you help me find my cousin? He's a huge, bold fellow who never met who never parts from his beer. Unmissable. Well, he must be over at St. James's Gate, or at the pub, I guess. He's a pastry chef. There he is, he's massive. Look at him right there. Can we get down on the ground and have a look at him? I've never actually done that before during these quests. God, look at him. Oh my god. We just absorbed him. There he is. Pastry chef affects bakeries. Begging for me to pop him out there, but it's only for maintenance cost reductions. Um, and yes, our money is pretty bad. So I think the last thing to do is buy all those pocket watches. I'm experimenting with 300 pocket watches. And we're going to send that off to Mbessa to make bank. And he loves the trade. Excellent. Hey, he must be on 100 now, I think. Actually, yeah, let's just check that. Look at that, 179, 99, 100, 100. Who would have thought Benty, of all people, would be the lowest reputation? I'm so, so surprised. Let's see what Margaret's got in terms of things we could buy as well, just out of curiosity. She's got the penny farthings, which you could also sell in, in Mbessa if you wanted to. Lots of fur coats. Because you could set up trade routes. When they're hitting their max numbers like this, you could set up trade routes to these guys and get things back and forth with them fairly reliably. Unless something happens where their shares are bought out or they go into a state of war. Um, I've never really done that before, but it's tempting to do out here because what we're going to need as we get into artisans is we're going to need a lot more rum. And you may remember on our island, we actually don't have rum native to this island as a fertility. We activated it through a trade union and uh, we have actually a, a production uh, debuff because of that. So what would be really nice if we could just buy rum from someone. So I'm guessing Margaret here on one of her big islands. 
Yeah, she's got 200. And it's only 24 a barrel. It's not too bad. Uh, and what about... Yeah, see, I need to see... Does she have it on any other islands? She's got cigarettes... Or not cigarettes. Cigarettes. Uh, cigars. And coffee and stuff like that. What about Arthur down here? He's also selling it for 24. So that's pretty interesting. You know, you could get a lot of rum just by setting up a route to buy it. And bring it to Crown Falls. And really keep yourself happy for quite a long time with that. Alternatively, obviously, we could just set up our own prediction chain and just really double down on what we got here. Now, we do have railways. We could activate Bright Harvest out here. I think that's what we'd really need to do, which would uh, heavily reduce the modules that we need, or sorry, increase the modules that we need, reduce the workforce we need, but increase our output three times. Yeah, I think that's probably what we'll have to do, and then we'll grow this city as well. We'll get to that before, when, when we... We'll come to that when we get to it, or whatever. You know what I mean. So let's, uh, I think we're done. So let's hop over to Crown Falls. Let's see what we got going on here. So the ships have arrived with the steam motors as well. Alexander Hancock is here also. We have room to make this a little bit better. So I was looking through some of the influence and having a look at what's been going on. So for zoo modules, we still have four that we can put down for free. Uh, so we want to increase, obviously, the attraction value as much as possible and just get as much money coming in here as possible as well. So let's do that. I don't even know if I have that much stuff. We'll have to just see. And again, this is all kind of temporary. I think I will be building like a much nicer big promenade with really cool, well, hopefully cool looking um, museum space and zoo space and things like that. But for now, we're just in a bit of a crisis for money. So we'll just pop down what we can. We have the great white sharks. So we're just going to dump them in. Even though it's just like all the same stuff. And then, uh, yeah, we could just get another one. Uh, maybe not. It don't quite fit. Could slam it there if we just get rid of the road. Do we even need this here? I don't know. <laughs> I'm guessing we... It's not... Yeah, I'm guessing we did need that. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. Well, I could build one of the most ugly looking things ever and just wrap the road around it. There you go. Alright. Again. I promise you it's temporary. Right, so that's as many as we can have, I think. Okay, so attraction should have went up there, which means next time the tendency is increasing by 131, which should bring up our money even more. And of course, then in the old world, we have uh, our public mooring set up here. It's probably not going to make that much, but we could, if we wanted to, put down some stuff here right away. Although it's probably just better stacking it in Crown Falls, I would imagine. You want as much attraction value as you can, especially if you're going to build a palace. Which, thinking about it, might be done out there. Because we don't really have the room for it here. But maybe, I don't know. I have to decide. I haven't decided these things yet. Uh, so yeah, we'll just see what we get from the attractions here. I don't think I'll use any items. But, seeing as we are here, let's grab as many items as we can. So we can bring and make um, Crown Falls more attractive. So any of those cultural items. That's it. So God, we've got so many dolphins and sharks. It's crazy. The Art of Medicine. Attractiveness 30. Equipped in a museum. Yeah, so we do have some museum items out there, actually, already, thinking about it. And seeing as we get the module space for free, we might as well. So let's send a bit of an exodus out to Cape Trelawney right now of just lots of ships carrying whatever we can. So yeah, so botanical garden, botanical garden, botanical garden. All right, the ship can go off as well. Cape Trelawney. Um, let's see, that's the zoo, zoo. I think we're full up on the zoo, so we don't really need any of these, not yet. Uh, might take these nice items though, because we might bring these with us anyway, or build these over there. Cape Trelawney. Uh, that might be it then. Botanical garden and museum. Yep, just send this off as well. 
And I think we'll leave it at that. All right, I know there's a lot of busy work, but hopefully we're pretty much done. Last thing actually I'm just gonna do is go up and buy a bunch of construction material. I was gonna sell this schooner as well. I don't really want it anymore. We get one influence back from that. A delivery quest. He wants cigars. I actually don't have cigars, so I'll just say no. I, I suppose we could have bought some, but what's the point of doing that? Let's dump our gold into our industry island. Get ready to get more. Alrighty, so, Crown Falls. Here we go. So, the, thing, the first thing I want to do here, obviously we have... Um, fields and things like that ready to go. As we get artisans, what we need is is canned food. So we might as well set up the production chain for that now. Uh, so for canned food, we need windows and glass, which we're bringing some with us, but we can just get building it, get building the basics. So that's going to be one to one. So you need two of these for every one of those. We get two window makers. Disappointed I'm increasing my workers hours. Well, you don't get a say in that, do you? All right, so basically we've got our sand mine going into our glass makers, which goes into, which both go into these things, but then we need to add wood. Um, so let's do that. Actually, do we not have any wood on the island? Surely we do. We have four of them, but they all have timber mills. Do they? Actually, one of them doesn't. A smuggling quest. Okay. I'll get to that in a moment. Yeah, so just temporarily, we'll just keep this out here. You know, just so that I know that it's next to what's going to be actually using it. Yeah, so whatever. Something like that for now. Cool. So insufficient workforce. Force, obviously. Uh, and that's going to give us all we need for windows. Then we need our canned food. Now, we don't have red pepper as a fertility here, but we do have a new trade union with da -da 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 red pepper seeds. All right, so now we can get red peppers. And I think I'll be even try to be even more efficient with this if I can, which is redoing this area. I'll probably do it in a time lapse in a few moments. We're actually just build farms, like as many farms we can fit in the circle, really, because uh, we, we are hurting for influence and we need the space. But anyway, let's begin our upgrade. So this is for the quest line uh, in Sunken Treasures, which I can't really remember what happens after we do this. I don't know if we ever fight the other ships that are like La Corona or whatever that are searching the depths for the scepter. I can't remember really what happens. Maybe we do fight them, maybe we don't. Either way, uh, so we have we need to attract 500 artisans. Uh, so you've recovered Nadaski's journal, but its pages are barely readable. Exposing the fragile pages to a long sea journey would be too risky. Instead, you must make room for art restorers at Crown Falls. All right, so we need 500 of those. And then after that, we need 500 engineers. So quite the uh, quite a lot of upgrading to do. So there we go. We're obviously low on workers now, but we've plenty of farmers to upgrade also. Nice. Pockets of unpaved road in here. As we modernize the area. Sometimes I like it, so I'll leave it. We'll have to add um, stone bridges soon as well. Alright, so how many is that? That's 240 artisans. Now, what they're going to need is their canned food and sewing machines. Now, obviously, these artisans are going to... I'm going to move them out there, but I have to do that in a time lapse as well and see what our layouts are going to look like. But it's basically going to be like this island, just artisan only. Uh, so, yeah, so canned food. Right, so for that, we're also going to need red pepper farm, which, like I said, I'm going to be a little lazy at first, but afterwards we'll make it a bit better. when that construction material arrives. Which might have just arrived now, actually, thinking about it. 162. Yeah, these are going to be some thick farms. Um, but with our 
bright harvest stuff, and I'll have to remember to move these and not destroy the steam motors because they're so valuable. A farm. A farm with no fields. It could happen. All right. Let's just do something like that for now. Like I said, this is very lazily going to be put down. That I'm basically going to redo it in like 10, 15 minutes. But it's just to get our population getting their stuff a bit quicker. Alright, so they have all that, then they're going to need cattle. Now we could do it where we use pigs instead, considering as we have pigs. If we bring that item out here, or get another one of them. Yeah, I guess we need to get another one. I'm not going to take it away from Lusk. So I was debating in my head whether or not I was going to try and really ramp up the production of Lusk to the point where I could ship stuff out of here to Crown Falls and Swords, so basically sustain two cities. Don't quite think it'd be possible, and because it's in a different session or region, we can't share the workforce here, right? So we'll be growing all these artisans, growing all these workers, but we don't get to add them to this island. So it doesn't really quite make sense to do that. I think it's fine to have a support island like this, but it kind of needs to be in the same session, kind of, uh, for it to properly work. I noticed as well, we're really stacking up uh, quite a lot of late game goods. We've got 300 uh, light bulbs. We have 100 pocket watches. Could start maybe clicking these to sell. Minimum stock, just leave it at 100 for now. I'm not sure if anyone actually buys these. But I do feel like they're pretty high value when you sell them. Um, let's do the same for the coffee. Just sell it if sell if it's above I don't know 280 keep it pretty high keep it high and tight all right sell if it's above 280 what did I say for this sell this if it's above 250 sell if it's above 100 that one's oh god damn it there we go many farthings in the pocket watches I'll let them stack up because we can always just manually sell them Speaking of, we should be able to sell our stuff out here now. Oh, my game just froze for a second. It's getting very destable as lately. Yeah, this is just on time, actually. He's just here. So we'll just tuck him in there. Sell our 300 pocket watches and make absolute bunk. Not in vain, do they wonder. And then we'll have to see what we can buy. Um, either we could buy items straight from Nate, if we want to be lazy and not transmute things. That's extremely lazy. But um, we could also be buying things in the New World. We're going to be looking for items that will give us uh, better rum production, basically. Because we have that, we have that um, trade union, but we don't actually have anything there. So we can send a couple of ships down here to get ready for that. And can we leave someone over maybe at Eli? All right, cool. So that's us ready in position to get items and things like that. Um, now, for the artisans, we're going to need our cannery, right? So we have our artisanal kitchen. We actually don't have an iron mine here. But there are, from what I remember, two iron mines up here. Yep, yeah, perfect. Get that down there. And then maybe we could actually have... A railway that just goes over here and powers these so we get twice as much out of it. Oh, there's another iron deposit there. Holy crap. Four? Oh, wow. I know the island has nine. I just didn't think they'd all be so close together. That's a, that's awesome. Oh, we'll definitely power this area then. We can get twice as much out of it. We'll do that in the future. But, um, yeah, for now, let's just pull this out that way. Cut across. All right, cool. So that's us making some basic iron. And then we will build our chicanery. So let's just slap it down here. It should be fine. And then we'll need our cattle farms. So I'm going to be pretty lazy with this one as well. Because I'm just going to redo this in a time lapse. I'm just setting up the basics so you know what's going on. And then after the fact, we'll just... Uh, Time lapse it, so you can see it being reordered nicely. All right, cool. So in terms of workforce, it's actually not too bad, considering. Um, let's 
Give him a couple other upgrades there. Right, so that should be canned food, and then we'll have to do sewing machines. Now, that's going to require furnaces, which is going to hurt our attractiveness quite a bit. It would be nice to get the iron somewhere else. It's just like, do we want to export iron here, set up furnaces, and then bring it back? I don't know. These ships are all ready to dump their stuff over here. All right, let's sell those pocket watches. Four million. I'll take it. Forgot about this. These are embassin, are they? That's a museum. This is for an apiary. Yeah, so two of these can be dropped here. Trade price is negative 10%. Loading speed 60%. That's pretty good. So we could even buy more pocket watches and stuff for even cheaper if we wanted to. I'm going to max that out. Actually, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to bring this ship over and change that up a bit. Yeah. Alright, so that's the last thing we're going to do. So the Augustus Extravaganza Steamer is going to come here, pick up this item so that when we do our trades and our bulk buys and sells, we'll get more for them. Alrighty, that money is... I hate looking at that. <laughs> more or less popular than before. Have we um, done a full rotation yet where people are coming in here yet? Almost. So how much time to go? 2 minutes 46. We'll see how much we get. I reckon a thousand. Not too sure, but we'll see. Alrighty, our population is climbing, though. We want to breach the 15,000 mark and hopefully even get to 16,000 uh, by the end of this episode. That'll be my goal. And we want to power this area as well. That's another thing we got to do. So I'm going to definitely need two rail lines. Um, but what I'm waiting for is the goddamn steel to come in. I'm sure I've sent it. Move all our idle ships over here now. We've actually got quite a lot of military ships, mostly just pirate ships that we bought. Alright, dump all that stuff. Dump that stuff. Dump all that. Alright, our ships are now empty. Can't dump the scrap, there's no room for it. There we go. Alright, cool. Great. Not that I'm worried about money. See, the thing is, it's like, yeah, the balance is going down. That doesn't look good, and it obviously affects the newspaper sometimes as well. But the reality is, it's like, we can just buy pocket watches and sell them for, like, absolutely ridiculous amounts of money. Um, so we're totally fine money-wise at this point in the game. But obviously, it would be nice to be positive. Um, so, how's it going? You're waiting on your goulash. Oh, I forgot to build the actual artisanal kitchens, didn't I? And at what timing is this? Two minutes for one minute thirty. Just it's fine. Just build one then. So they have their red peppers. They have their beef. We've got obviously way more red peppers than beef. That's fine though. Okay, cool. So I think at this point, now that we're about halfway through the episode, I'll activate time lapse mode. I'm gonna go in, build a little um, artisan area, probably out here. Yeah. I think that's pretty much it. So build an artisan area out here, have its own town halls. Town halls, our coverage are going to be really awkward now. Uh, maybe not actually. We could probably get at least, yeah, we could get at least one on each. All right, good. Yeah, so that's what I'm going to do. So make room for them, move them out, and then upgrade the ones that are left there behind as we've been doing before. All right, let's begin. All right, so you should know the drill already by this point, making sure that we're in blueprint mode and then just laying down as many houses as possible, pushing all the way up to the extremities of the landmass that we're using, be it a cliff or in this case, these like little islands here. Making sure that we have room for people to get out. You gotta build multiple bridges. Really, you could just build one, but I wanna build multiple to make it look nice. And also because I want a bit of codependency uh, with these islands. You know, we're gonna have these amenity buildings, which we're filling out the internals here. Uh, we want them to actually be shared between the different islands. Now, their range is going to be really 
tough to reach these three separate islands here that we're working with. So what I'm hoping to do is have town halls that have items that will actually extend the range of the church, the variety theater, the school, and the university. These are all the amenity buildings or luxury buildings or needs buildings that the artisans are going to need, right? We don't need a pub, we don't need a market. The artisans just need those four buildings I mentioned. And then town halls are hopefully going to buff them and increase their range. And that way we should have full coverage of these three little islands just for the artisans. And if we can get like two or three different trade unions down, we should certainly have the coverage for it. Uh, then we can get other items that will also reduce the needs, increase the income or whatever else. So that's kind of the plan. And obviously, as you can see, as I normally do here, just filling in almost as many houses as possible. It's not quite as many houses as possible. Just, I leave gaps on purpose so that we can actually put down some ornaments and make things look a little bit more interesting. And I try to just not avoid having too many blocky areas, which is easy to do if you start on the outsides and work your way in, which is what I'm doing here. I actually left room just by that waterfall there just to make sure that we could get over to the coal deposit, which uh, we'll be doing later in this episode. Uh, so yeah, so that's pretty much it. And then I just kind of do the exact same thing again, but over on this side. So I've decided that most immunity buildings are going to go over here. And then I'll put down the... Tra I actually forgot to put down the trade union immediately. Uh, I'll be putting it down a little bit later. So uh, I don't think it was my initial concept to do that. But just when I was thinking about putting down two variety theaters, I was like, yeah, I think it would just be better to kind of cover this with town halls. Uh, now this little island that we're working on here could actually probably deal have two town halls on it but i kind of just decided ultimately it's just nicer aesthetically to have it in the center of the island to just make it look a little nicer so that's a that's a that's a tough thing to do when you know that like you could optimally build uh, a little bit better than that but i'm like well it's kind of nice just to have your town hall central to the town district that i guess we're in when people were talking about dlcs before and like, what would i like to see in a dlc it would be like something like I don't know, a governor's hall or something, something bigger than a town hall that has bigger coverage and then, you know, a fire station, but like a bigger fire station, a police station, but a bigger one. I think that'd be a kind of a cool add-on DLC where it's like these things maybe cost more, maybe a police station that can hold its own item, you know? I mean, these things have large gameplay affecting, uh, game design affecting kind of things, but it'd be interesting to see if they could do something like that. These like late game combination buildings that kind of combine multiple things maybe. And I certainly know that master builders and things like that would love that sort of stuff. Anything that optimizes is, is right up there, Ali. Um, but yeah, range extending kind of things like that for me would be good, or radius extending things. Uh, anyways, so that was kind of where I left the two little islands out there, largely in blueprint. Got a few of the buildings upgraded, but now I'm over here with the bright harvest stuff, looking at our two railroad tracks now. So I had imported a lot of steel from the old world. Um, made sure I'm just constantly bringing in ships full of construction material. You'll notice that my income fluctuates and the uh, inventory kind of up, goes up and down every now and then with that stuff because I've largely cut out any of the busy work I did over there. Uh, but anyway, I've ended up changing my mind about this entire area, but I haven't redone it yet. Um, so for the next few episodes, I actually don't know how far, how long I'll be keeping it before, but for the next few episodes, this area will stay intact. But I... Ultimately, what I've decided to do is farms really should make use of every free grid space that you have, right? So you want to be putting them up against cliffs, shoreline, or whatever else, you know, anything irregular. And I decided, for whatever reason, just to build this right out here in the middle of nowhere, uh, in this really big plain area. But ultimately, this would be much better to have, like, little factories going and have, you know, our industry here. But... It's fine for now. It does work. It's like everything has tractor barns. Everything's going to be like really efficient. It's all around the trade union. They're all going to get really buffed. So that's great. It's just I know that later down the line, I'm probably going to move these up onto the hill at the back. And I talk a little bit about that a bit later. <clears throat> but just in case people are looking at that, wondering why I've done it there. It's just, I don't know, kind of laziness. But at least we're still getting all the buffs out of the area for now. All right, that is the end of that time lapse. That was quite the long time lapse, about 40 minutes yet again. These things are taking longer and longer, but we did do quite a lot. We essentially built two, you know, minor towns, both for our artisans. This is all going to be artisans, I'm hoping, uh, when the time comes, and maybe even have this one be artisans as well. I don't know if we're going to need all those, but nevertheless, we have the room for them, and this area is it's kitted out for them, you know, with a variety theater, a church, 
uh, another variety theater which we're probably going to need. The only thing is here with this variety theater in the university, it doesn't have full reach over this way. And this one doesn't have quite full reach over this way either. I'm hoping though, if in this town hall we could get two items that will boost a university or variety theater's range, that could give them the range they need to actually supply this entire mini island here and this one as well. So hopefully, if we get those items, that, that'll sort it out. We wouldn't need this other um, variety theater here. We could just go with more housing. Um, the, the school, from what I can tell, seems to reach pretty far, and it's it's kind of the same deal here. If we get something that extends the reach of the school out that way, then these islands could kind of work off of each other, I suppose. Um, so we're pretty close now in the quest line to doing uh, 500 artisans. We'll just upgrade another couple in a moment. Uh, this is kind of more of a temporary setup. I'm sure I talked about it probably in the time lapse, but just generally, just for my own sake now, um, to verbalize it, we've got... Let's see, how many tractor barns do we have? It's tough to see. Let's just do this. There we go. One, two, three, four, five, six. So we have six tractor barns feeding off of this one fuel station. And I think you can have ten. I think. I'm going to have to probably double check that and maybe look it up on a wiki or something. But at the moment, we've got six. We had Alexander Hancock. I've stuck him in there again. That's not the same one we had in the old world. We've got two. Uh, well, he's a busy man. He travels around. So he's here in, you know, instilling morale into the workforce in both places. Uh, so we get productivity 80%, increased number of modules. These farms are thick, um, for lack of a better term, 266 modules on each one of these. This is what I was saying about Crown Falls has the space to do this kind of thing. Now we have just stuck them out here for now, um, but what I'm probably gonna end up doing is once I can kind of gauge demand, we can have one that's like maybe entirely red pepper, maybe one other uh, crop as well, and then, you know, specialize them out a bit, because we got loads of room. I, I want to build another one of these, but like up here, and then we can start tucking things in against the wall as well, but it's 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 a pretty fun optimization game. It's a tricky one as well to try and fit in all of these little tractor barns. They have to have access to a road. The main farm itself has to have access to a road. We want to then hit the different supply warehouses, but of course... I don't want the warehouses being really within one of these circles, not really. And then we have the fuel station, which has to have, you know, relatively close range as well. So it's a tricky, it's a tricky thing to pull off. I'm sure there's like, you know, master builders out there that have it all worked out perfectly. But for me, I've, I've never really tried to do this too much before, so it's interesting. I know for sure that I'm going to want to pull even more farms into the circle eventually, if possible. Because what you could have is have maybe a couple warehouses in the center and then have like a, a chain of farms on the outside. The modules don't need to be in, just the farm building itself. Um, so we, we definitely loads of room for more. So we'll get the most out of Alexander Hancock we can here. Um, so I thought we'd just do it together. Uh, so, uh, otherwise the episode will be entirely time-lapsed. Uh, see what we need as we upgrade. So we'll just get the last couple of artisans that we need to get to that 500 milestone. There we go, we become a city status. And we have to deliver to the art restorer's Nadaski's journal. And there they are here. Just chilling in the grass, I guess. The city is now to there we go, just let them stand on more, more well-kept grass. I didn't get to read what they said. Oh well. Oh, they, they just moved, that's why. <laughs> Alright. We're lucky there's even a faint possibility of returning this journal to a semblance of its original condition. We must first see the binding. People tell me a flower-based glue will be gentler on such delicate manuscript than an acid one. And that will also want the precision and punch of a modern sewing machine for the stitching. So we have to provide two sewing machines and five tons of flour. Now, they probably have the flour but they probably don't have the sewing machines because we haven't set them up yet. So that's the next thing to do. Um, so I'm just going to move those houses over here somewhere. So we've got one, two, three, four. We'll just pop those ones over. And then we'll get to work on whatever chains that we need to do. All right, good. Uh, and then we'll just upgrade these guys, or pop them back down, I should say. Excellent. Alright, cool. It's gonna look great. Uh, I'm really, really happy with how this area is turning out, just in general. I'll just reset the camera, right? This is the default camera position now. 
So that's kind of like what it's going to look like when we get it all said and done. This area is looking really cool. Want to kind of upgrade some more and more of the villagers. <clears throat> Excuse me. But um, we're going to be using them all the time on the farms. Uh, so they really almost need their own area again. I like them being on the outskirts of the river or maybe even building their own little grain villages in, again in the future. Although we have gone for a more optimal build style out here. Uh, now we have a quest to do again. What's this one? You reward you can make better what's already gold. A puzzle quest. My pigs, you need to help me. They've escaped. All right. I need out with me lowly troubles. How many do we have to find? Five. All right, we've got three. Easy enough so far. And there we go. Oh God, <laughs> she gave us back five sausages for the five pigs. Five tons of sausages, yikes. <laughs> uh, all right, so. Next, let's have a look at our consumption rates here. It's like starting the game all over again, basically. We're producing enough fish, we're producing enough schnapps and work clothes, plenty of sausages, bread, soap, that's all good, but we're low now on beer. So we'll have to figure that one out. So, um, well, it's easy enough. We have so much wheat. It's really not a problem. We've, we're producing 14 tons per minute if we wanted to. Uh, we're not nearly consuming that. So let's just increase the... Let's get another, we're probably going to have to build our own St. James's Gate, uh, like I said, and then power it all on. So we could do that now. I mean, I don't see why not. Maybe have it closer down to the coastline, actually. Might be a nice place for it. Um, yeah, let's do that. So we'll need a railway line to kind of come down. Well, I guess we should blueprint out what we want first. Um, hmm. Let's look at the beer chain just for a second so we have malt every 30 seconds and brewery every minute so twice as many breweries and then i'm sure the hops will be fine but we'll just build i don't know one two three four five see if we can handle five we're not going to build them all immediately but we need to blueprint it out for the future and then we'll do something like this oh, really? i guess it would have to be six all right let's go with six Hopefully a... Yeah, one of these can cover all of that. A governess. And that's back in... Um, swords. Okay. Actually, while I'm here, I've been meaning to pick up some construction material and take it out. Duty done. Time for yeah, let's just get this and bring it to Cape Trelawney. I just keep, I've been doing that constantly throughout the different time lapses as well. Alright. Anyways, oh, and that reminds me, I have penny farthings to sell. Boom. Alrighty, nice, looking good. Let's go back. Alright, cool. Haven't done a dive in a while, but we'll leave it. So, five breweries, then we'll have something like a trade union. Then we'll need two malt. Uh, sorry, three malt. One, two, and let's just scoot and hope for the best with that. Three malt, something like that. Uh, we'll probably want a fire station. Breweries have a tendency to blow. I'm just trying to think, actually with this being that range, there's definitely room for a lot more in here, but yeah, for now, let's just do something like this. So I'll have a fire station there, uh, another one there. Two's enough. Isn't it really? All right, and then let's do something just temporarily. We'll stick in two of these. And then we've got plenty of room for other things. These will probably be moved out again out of the circle in future. But uh, I think for now, this is just fine to copy and paste this. So essentially what we'll need is power though, right? We need our first power station to be at least near this. That's then going to power it, I guess. Um, so maybe something around here the better design withstood an attack All right let's have a look at the power station I want it to be a little further down because it should be able to hit it's actually kind of a waste putting here it should really be somewhere like central you know out like this area the 
and that way it's got reach to the left, to the right, up and down, you know what I mean? So, so that would be much more ideal. And then we'll have, yeah, we should really build industry around this. God, it's such a big project, man. I could be here for forever. This is why I was like, oh, I'll time lapse it. But I'm, I'm essentially time lapsing the entire game then. You're just going to have to bear with me while I figure things out on the fly. Now, that makes sense to me, right? I know that we're going to need, I wish I knew exactly how many, like how many of these is it? How long does a straight road work for on this thing? So let's just grab it here. That gives me some indication. Yeah, so what I'm looking at here is the paved road going all along this way and then to the right. So, okay. That gives me just a, a rough indication of like what kind of distance are we talking about here that we're going to end up needing. So let's just stick it down here for now. Right around, I'd say about there-ish. We'll feed in a railway line. Let's just get rid of this for now. And then we can power all this industry as well. We've got silos and everything, I think. We actually don't have silos on the uh, work, uh, the sheep just yet, but we can do that. With all the extra grain we're making, we can definitely do it. All right, cool. Let's just build it beautiful. And then let's get this railway line down. Straight down here. Okay, so that's power. So, now we'll do our little brewery area. So I'm just going to copy and paste this. Let's just move it here for a second. Delete this area. Good. Right, so... I reckon it will work all the way up to here. See, I'm probably going to grow this place. Oh, God. See, temporary measures just don't work very well <laughs> when you're planning on changing things. But let's just do this for now. And then uh, we can move it later if it needs to be. Because uh, ideally, these farms want to be making use of all the irregular terrain, right? That's the, that's the goal. Is to have all the farms kind of up here pushing up against all this irregular terrain because they've got all those nice modules. So they'll, they'll probably move up there. Um, and then we'll need a railway line that splits and goes up here and a fuel station somewhere up here to just power this entire area. I think that's that's really the the goal. And then what we'll do is build kind of like the St. James's Gate area that we have. These enclosed kind of more rectangular areas with buildings and fire stations and supply warehouses and things like that. Um, so yes, yeah, so that makes sense to me. Now we're very low on bricks, but we did just order a ship to come here with some, didn't we? I think we did. Got so many sh pirate ships of the line here. I'm just going to send these back to the old world. Some of them anyway. Right, well, seeing as we don't have enough for clay, let's just uh, build a regular road right now. Oh, and this takes... All oh, right, I didn't actually even realize or think about it that this takes a certain workforce. Now, it might be okay. I think the building still operates even without... It'll just be less efficient, but it still gives electricity. It looks like maybe the range is hurt. That's pretty low range. I know that we're using um, dirt road. Okay. Well, anyway, let's begin. And then we only needed just an extra one anyway. I actually didn't even need that, thinking about it. That's fine. So this is the equivalent of... Yeah, so that they work together, right? That's perfect. Cool. And they should be powered. We're not going to put this down. We don't have any items to use yet, but yeah. So I guess they process oil less efficiently. It should go up to 75, right? Let's see. I'm just kind of curious about this, because what does it mean? It's either powered or not, so that's why I'm just confused. Yeah, it's going up above 75. It's got perfect productivity, but it doesn't have the full engineer workforce. So yeah, maybe it's the range. I'm guessing it's range that that's based on. I, don't pretend to understand I mean, that would make sense to me oh, a little bit. Because um, yeah, it does seem to be going up all the way. Okay. 
Uh, well, anyway, that doesn't really matter. So beer should be fine now, right? That was quite the ordeal, but we set up beer, I think. Yeah, loads. And then obviously we can move more buildings here and just keep getting like, we can get way more canned food out of everybody. Now canned food every now and then turns off, doesn't it? Because we run out of the cannery, the artisanal kitchen. So yeah, let's just move that over here while, we're, while we have this area, I guess. Might as well make use of the power that we've got. So that's going to be an intermediate product, which is serving much more than its demand. This is its demand. So the demand is higher than what we're serving, so we'll just build another one of these. Your ship has returned from its voyage. And then if we look at agricultural products, meat is a little low, and... Uh, but red peppers is totally fine. So we'll just need another cattle farm. Which I don't even know where it is at the moment. I've forgotten. Oh yeah, it's down here. So we just built two of them, didn't we? Ah, we don't even have a warehouse. This would be probably part of the problem. So when they get their silo activated, yeah, it's at 150% right now. It says combined. So when it goes back up to 200, that'll fix that. Okay, good, great. This is good. I think we're pretty much sorted. I'll notice anyway if anything suddenly falls off. You know, it'll be obvious. Uh, okay, so the next thing was to do what? Sewing machines. All right, that might be the last thing we do today. Sewing machines. So we'll have to set up our own furnaces. Obviously improved by electricity, this says as well. Uh, we can make just one for now. It's going to start costing us a lot of money though because it's going to hurt attractiveness. Not that much, but it will hurt a little bit. Um, so we have that. We don't have any coal on the island, thinking about it. So we'll have to set up a coal mine, which we have one there. Oh, they're all over the place. I kind of like the idea of having the one where I've already built a bridge here. Yeah, I just like that idea. I don't know why. We'll keep it there. Oh, I had my audio go again. Some people were saying this is to do with NVIDIA drivers. It could be the case. I've also been recording for two hours, one hour 46, according to my thing. Uh, so I feel like it's something to do with that because I don't get it for a long time. It seems to only happen when I've recorded like an excessive amount. But I did clean my PC out the other day. So I'm a little bit concerned. Uh, so what was that? That was coal. Yeah. So coal and iron. We already have the iron. And then we need a furnace. Your ship has returned from its so that's our one furnace. And then we've got six of these on the island. Let's get a sewing machine factory. And that's going to require ten bricks. Now those bricks should have arrived. There it is. It's just coming in right now. Bricks and steel. Yeah, and then we, as long as we just finish that quest, then we could probably wrap it up. But we've grown our population to 15,390, so not quite 16,000 like I was hoping we'd get to. But we could do a few upgrades. Turn this into a bit more of a, a worker town. Right, so population's climbing. So when do we get our next influence? At 15,600. So we are 201 away. Really just waiting on that ship, I suppose. Uh, let's see what else is going on. So, yeah, it's all part of the contingencies, but I guess nothing is ever set in stone for me. I will, I will always redo areas, but this will probably be redone eventually as well when I move all those farms up. But um, I think we've got enough oil to support all this anyway. Seems to have a lot. I had been saving it up for some time. It's good. Everyone's giving me money. It's great. I mean, money is not an issue. It's just time to do things and forward thinking and forward planning that I'm failing at a little bit. A lot of people often say, like, oh, I get really overwhelmed in Anno um, with trade routes and stuff. I actually don't really mind the trade routes because once you have it set up, it's it should be stable. It's when you're doing things like doing upgrades and not really thinking about 
if you're going to run out of something, that's when you can get into trouble. Like bread, I just noticed there, bread is a little bit low. Like eventually bread's going to run out. The population will tumble and the money will change. And then you're like, oh, what do I do? And you have to go back. And it's like, oh, I was in a, maybe you were looking at a different area and you have to come back here. That's when it can get overwhelming. But you, you'll notice that I, I rarely ever have to go back to these different islands. Because you just, if you just set it up and don't grow things unnecessarily, it's just set. It's set for good. Um, so that's just kind of how I help. I tackle things, I guess. Try not to take too much on. But I still get overwhelmed when I'm like, I'm constantly forward thinking. I'm like, well, this is going to move over here. And, you know, do I have time to do that now? Or should I leave it till later? It's all about picking your battles. <laughs> uh, with, like, little problems. But that should give us the sewing machines we need. So let's have a look at consumer goods. Sewing machines is four times as much as we need right now. Uh, four tons as much as we need now, right now, actually. Benty and Anne Harlow have reached a trade agreement. Wow. So things I do often forget is like keeping track of quests and keeping track of like where have I sent ships that I'm using like more manually. Because I'm often like, oh, I need to be buying like construction material out here and coming back. Try to do the best I can with that. You could just set up production for this, but I like to just buy it. So I don't have to worry about the workforce for a while. Alright, crown falls. Off you go. We have 23 influence now, so we could be selling some ships. Or not selling some ships, sorry. Sorry, building more trade unions and things. Actually, while we're here, this is just another one of these things. While we're here, pick up some gold. We're probably going to need it. There's another monitor. A pirate monitor. A Pierforian monitor, actually. Sell that. All right, and we'll send this to Lusk, our one production island. Anne Harlow and Arthur Gasparov agreed to peace. He's still hanging in there. He's got his one island out in the New World. Anything interesting we could buy from any of these? Could just buy a load of rum and bring it to us really quickly if we wanted to. Sure, why not? Oh, actually, this ship can stay here. I have it here to buy items. I'm looking for an item that will give me... That's exactly what I'm looking for. Rum distillery, advanced rum distillery, productivity 40%. But I also need that kind of item for... Sh there it is. <laughs> Sugarcane plantation. So it's only 12%, but it's a, it's a little bit of a help. So until we find the upgraded version of her, that'll have to do. Because we're going to have to like increase our rum production quite a lot. Alright, cool. Alright, let's see. Do we have the... There we go. We have our sewing machines. We need to build a university just to read his book. <laughs> okay. I mean, I kind of guess so. Uh, well, we can... Don't we have one? Oh, no, we don't. Uh, do we even need one yet? Technically, no. We need another thousand uh, population before we can actually... Well, we can build it. We don't need it. I don't see why not. Might as well just build it. Get the quest done. Sail to the art restores and get your reward. Um, sail to them. Okay. Let's get the flagship and just tuck it right in there. So, while Nadaski's journal is being restored, the Queen wants you to establish a university in the region. Its scholars should be able to help decipher the journal's contents. Uh, yep. Nadaski's journal incomplete. So we can read it now. We might read that on the next episode. I'll be interested to see what it says. And follow the quest line a bit further. Find the locations mentioned. Oh, so we can do some dives. Nice. Yeah, that'll give us a nice break from the uh, building in the next episode to kind of jump between doing the dives and then also like building things up. We can actually see where they are on the map anyway, so it's fairly quick to do. 
Um, okay, so I think that's going to be pretty much it. Let's just do a little upgrade and get the hell out of here. <laughs> um, just so that we get our population correct. There we go. Can't do anything about the engineers just yet, but uh, as we build up this town and build up our production alongside it, we'll be good to go. So, a lot of building in the next episode. I think we're going to just be building this entire area up and really trying to distribute oil and getting the most out of these places. Yeah, man, it's going to be a hell of a journey. But I do have a lot of construction material here. We could start moving all the farms up here. See, I didn't think of it until I was done, so... I guess I'll just have to do that in the next episode at some point. Set up farms up there. Redraw this area so we can actually, like, lay out the production of different things. Yeah, it's basically like doing that Lusk Island all over again, but out here. But even more efficient, because at least we've got this massive blank canvas of space. So that helps a lot. All right, that is going to be it for this episode. Quite a long one for me, but hopefully the time lapses make it good. Making up for the last one anyway, which is quite short. Uh, I just want to say thanks again for all the support. Really do appreciate it. Remember, you can be a ch channel member if you want to help support it directly. Copyright claims, still no word on them. There is just a few days to go. Um, so I'm guessing they're going to back down. Hopefully at this point, it would be, be really annoying if they left it to the, very, to the 11th hour, as they say, and uh, changed things up on me. Uh, but yeah, so that's pretty much going to be it. If you have any ideas, comments, questions, concerns, let me know in the comments, and I'll be reading them in after this episode, actually. All right, thank you guys very much, and I'll see you in the next one. Hey guys, thank you very much for watching, and remember, if you want to support this series directly, you can click the Join button to become a channel member. Doing so will get your name in the credits, as well as loyalty badges and emotes to use in the comments. If you don't see the Join button, it means the video has been copyright claimed, but you can still join from the channel page on desktop. You can also link your account to our Discord to get a special role on there that will give you access to the Senate House and a few other perks.